Mary Immaculate High School was not just one of the worst schools in Cardiff, but among the bottom schools in the whole of Wales. They've turned that around in six years, achieving high scores and grades from their latest Estin report. Inside, teachers, governors and pupils heard the good news. As a school, <coughs> we have also been on a journey with its own ups and downs. A few years ago, Mary Immaculate High School, a school that serves some of the most deprived wards in Wales was earmarked for closure. Results were poor, expectations were low. The poor headlines at the time reflected a community at its lowest ebb. However, with the dedication of both my predecessor and the staff as a whole, things were turned around. The inspection report from both Estin and the Archdiocese highlight the hard work and commitment that all members of the school community display on a daily basis. The school has had a difficult history and today we are exceptionally proud to say that we are pupils of Mary Immaculate. The report also recognises the clear mission and vision that the school has and the high expectations that we as pupils have towards our learning. We are, we are especially proud that our strong sense of community has been raised. <coughs> the work that the school has done to support the most vulnerable students have been highly commended with the work of the bridge identified as sector leading. We know that those students who have used the bridge facility value the support, care and guidance the staff and its programmes provide. It's an honour for me to be head teacher of this school uh, and the journey that it's made uh, over the last couple of years from being a school that was a mark for closure in 2009 to now we're top of the class. Some fantastic results from Estin. Uh, they've, they've lauded our success and the hard work that we do with our young people and we're, I'm very proud of them and of my colleagues. And obviously for, for the staff here it must have been such a difficult job motivating people when, when you are earmarked for closure and things are that low it must be so hard to motivate people and get things right well my predecessor put in in place practices and ideas that move things on with staff um, but they bought into that because they saw that uh, it transformed lives education transforms lives uh, and for the young people that we have here um, some of them come from very deprived backgrounds it's it's of the utmost importance that we're able to do that uh, and to make a difference to them the inspector said that the school made sure that every pupil was important. Absolutely, and that's what underpins our success. No one is left behind. Uh, we focus on our, every individual, we work hard with every person. They, they all mean something, uh, and we spend a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, dedicating ourselves to them and removing those barriers to learning so that they're able to achieve at such a high level. And the report highlighted a, a, a bridge scheme, to f looking at helping so certain students. Can you explain what, what that is? Yes, they noted the bridge unit we have here, working with the vulnerable youngsters as what they call sector leading. In other words, the practice that is there is something that other schools should note and take notice of and actually uh, see if they can replicate within their own communities. And it comes back to that point I mentioned a moment ago. It's removing barriers to learning, supporting youngsters, helping youngsters, but fundamentally finding their way through that they're able to achieve and do their best. Obviously, what, what, what next for the school now? Because you've got those high standards now. I guess it's the team, the staff, the pupils keeping those standards going. There's always more to do. There's always more for us to do. Uh, there's always areas that we can continue to be excellent in or to work towards. That's the challenge. And having something to aspire to for any community is very important. So the school has turned it around and become a major success story. But is that something that other schools in Cardiff could learn from? I spoke to Cardiff Council's Cabinet Member for Education. Well, I mean, we're doing quite an extensive school building um, programme in Cardiff. Um, plans are coming online for Eastern High. Um, we're planning another new secondary school building in the west of the city. Um, I mean, a building isn't a school. The school is the pupils and the teachers. But there's no getting around the fact that if a school is dilapidated or not suitable for the purposes, it will actually affect the education of the children. Both for the hopes of the children who are going through the system, but also for the future of Cardiff as a capital city of Wales, we have to have well-educated, adaptable um, future members of the population to uh, to keep us growing. I mean, the city's grown immensely over the last few years, um, but for economic prosperity, we have to have people who've got the educational qualifications who can actually take us further. 
Children from some of Cardiff's poorest and most deprived areas are taught here and after today's excellent Estin report, the head teacher insists they'll continue to give every child the best education they can get.